So the gubernatorial race in Georgia is one of the uh, most rigged elections we've seen in quite a while, but the Republicans are always cheating, so it's it's really nothing new at this point. It's just, it's pretty crazy, almost like how brazen this one was, though. So what we're going to be looking at here, uh, there's this smug guy who's really disgusting, a piece of garbage. His name is uh, the Daily Wire third stringer. He's going to talk about Stacey Abrams, who conceded... But she also stated, which was very admirable, was that this election was stolen, which is uh, precisely what it was, because uh, there were a t there was a ton of voter suppression going on uh, in Georgia before this election happened. And we're going to get into that uh, after we see the smug Daily Wire third stringers video talking about this in which he straw mans and just says really random stuff and Again, like this weird Ben Shapiro like theories that he has of like, you know, where Ben Shapiro's like, this is the real reason why liberals want free college. It's because they want to make more liberals go to uh, the the uh, the liberal arts. Like what? What the hell are you talking about, dude? So this dude is gonna uh, play into that in a second here too, and it's gonna be pretty egregious. And that's obviously because it comes from the Daily Wire third stringer. So check it out. Uh, let's let's watch this embarrassing guy. Stacey Abrams, total sore loser, awful candidate, boasted about how illegal aliens are part of her co voter coalition. <laughs> not a good idea for future candidates who are taking notes right now. Don't do that. That's not that doesn't play well with voters. So she uh, constantly was trying to drag this thing out. She wouldn't concede. She's still barely conceding. Here is Stacey Abrams talking to Jake Tapper after it's all but been admitted around the country that the Republican Brian Kemp beat her. Do you think that Brian Kemp is not the legitimate governor-elect of Georgia? The law as it stands says that he received an adequate number of votes to become the governor of Georgia. And I acknowledge the law as it stands. I am a lawyer by training, and I am someone who's taken a constitutional oath to uphold the law. But we know sometimes the law does not do what it should and that something being legal does not make it right. This is someone who has compromised our systems. He's compromised our democratic systems, and that is not appropriate. And therefore, my mission is going to be to make certain no one else has to face this conversation. The law as it stands. Listen to what she's saying. Read between the lines here. She's saying, well, yes, according to the law, the person who wins the most votes becomes the governor. Yeah, that's according to the law. But sometimes the law gets it wrong, meaning the people got it wrong, meaning that the person who gets the most votes should not become the governor, that there should be some new election, a runoff election, another recount. We're going to discover new ballots somewhere. She is saying, she says, look, I'm a lawyer. I guess she is a lawyer. She's pretty, certainly pretty slippery. She's got some of the traits of lawyers stereotypically. But what she is arguing against is the ability of Georgians to choose their governor says, yeah, I guess technically according to the law, he won the election, but I don't think he should have won the election. And therefore she's suggesting that he stole it. I mean, that's the quote that, that an Abrams loss in Georgia is that, uh, this is the suggestion among Democrats that he stole the election. It was illegitimate. It was unfair. It wasn't. He won the election. He didn't win it by a little couple thousand votes or 10,000 votes. He won it by a good margin, but they won't even concede that because to them, to progressives, any time a conservative wins, that is illegitimate. Why is it illegitimate? Because there's progress. There's progress to be made. That's why we're progressives, isn't it? There's a utopia at the end. We're going to get to it. And if you stand in the way of progress, if you stand athwart history yelling stop, then you must be either stupid or evil. You must be so stupid you can't see the progress in front of you, or you've got to be evil. You want to stop people from uh, living in this paradise that the Democrats are going to give you if you just give them a little bit more money and a little bit more power. That's what she means. That's what all of these Democrats mean when they say it's illegitimate, the law failed, democracy failed, they stole it. What they're really saying is any time a conservative wins, that is illegitimate because it's against progress. Yeah, so there may not be anyone more more smug and insufferable than the Daily Wire third stringer. He is only facing competition against Stephen Clam Chowder, um, but I think that honestly that's probably the only person. But anyway, so what we're, what we're talking about here is this is so hilarious. So this is the craziest thing that I've ever heard in my entire life. I'll tell you what it is. The craziest thing I've ever heard in my entire life is that the person who is... Uh, 
who is running for governor is overseeing the elections. Can you believe that? So who certifies these elections? The secretary of state of that of said state. Who's the secretary of state of the state that Brian Kemp was running for governor in in Georgia? Brian Kemp. The guy is overseeing his own election. How is that allowed? There needs to be a rule in place immediately that it completely, completely outlaws in totality uh, the, the existence of the ability for a gubernatorial candidate to be overseeing his own election. That is the most insane thing I've ever heard in my entire life. It's unbelievable. I'm saying this right now, and I've, I've already known this for a long time. And it still blows my mind because the thought of this is the, it's the biggest conflict of interest to ever exist on all of planet Earth. Now, here is uh, the reason why Brian Kemp uh, is a total scumbag. And here's why. So uh, this is from the Rolling Stone. They say this past Tuesday, the deadline for Georgia residents to register to vote. The AP reported that at Kemp's insistence. More than 53,000 voter applications have been suspended indefinitely. More than two-thirds of those applications were filed by, guess who? Black people. As the AP report makes clear, a lot of people in Georgia don't even know that this has happened to them. One woman, while trying to demonstrate to her college students how Georgians can verify their registration, discovered that she had been removed from the rolls herself. That's insanity. This person who's... Uh, a college professor trying to, to trying to show her students, hey, this is how you make sure that you're registered. Because I guess even they know that there's some fufu fufu action going on where they're trying to uh, take people off voter rolls because you know that they they'll know they they will lose without a free and fair election. Now she was taken off herself. That's hilarious. That's insane. It's unbelievable. Now here is um, another another article that talks about this. It says. Sorry, this is a separate voter purge. Let me make that clear. So it says, even by Georgia standards, the voter purge of late July 2017 was remarkable. In a single day, more than half a million people, 8% of Georgia's registered voters, were cut from the voter rolls. Republican Secretary of State Brian Kemp, an avid supporter of President Donald Trump, who has described himself as a, quote, politically incorrect conservative, <laughs> lol, oversaw the removals eight months after he declared himself a candidate for governor. This guy's been preparing for this. He's been preparing for this since July 2017. And the fact that this smug uh, douchebag called the Daily Wire, third, no, his name is the Daily Wire third stringer, goes off and says, you know, oh, well, <laughs> this wasn't stolen, bro. They've been, they've been purging voter rolls like madmen on purpose so that less black people go out to vote. And yes, this was absolutely within the margin of what happened. So here's what happened. Here's listen, listen this. It says, the purge was noteworthy for another reason. For an estimated 107,000 of those people, 107,000, their removal from the voter rolls was triggered not because they moved or passed away or went to prison, but rather because they had decided not to vote in prior elections. Many of these previously registered voters may not even realize they've been dropped from the rolls. If they show up at the polls on November 6th to, uh, to vote in the heated Georgia governor's race, they won't be allowed to cast a ballot. So uh, there was uh, about, I think, like a majority of these people who had, uh, who had actually voted for Obama back in 20 2008. And so what they were doing is, is they were just totally uh, voter purging people not for legitimate reasons, right? For them moving or whatever or passing away. No, the reason why they're getting purged is because they have an excuse to do it where dumb Republicans are going to fall for it because they're morons. Let's keep it real, right? Um, the truth behind the real, the real problem of what's going on here is they're finding excuses to purge voters who are disproportionately African-American. I have to tell you guys this. Please, if you're listening to this right now, go read the Al Gore and uh, George Bush Supreme Court case. It's very, it's very lengthy, but get to the specific part of all the cheating that went on in Florida because they did things like, you know, use butterfly ballots where they set them up to fail, where it was 
uh, a way where you would have a, a system. It's sort of like where uh, Bill Nelson's, you know, candidacy was in the bottom left corner of the ballot so to conceal it. Um, it's similar to that where you have the instructions set up in a way that's so odious and devious that you're able to get them to vote for two presidential candidates on accident. Um, and they did those in African-American um, places. And so you just find these ridiculous reasons to purge these voter rolls. Most of the times these people aren't even notified and it just happens to them. And you go and they go, what the hell happened? I didn't, you know, I was registered to vote. What, what the hell's going on here? So the idea that anybody with two brain cells, I repeat, two, one, two brain cells to rub together cannot come away with the understanding that this was very, very clearly a stolen election. Um, and honestly, if I were Stacey Abrams right now, I don't know how I would be able to sleep at night because you just had an election stolen from you. Theft occurred. These voter roll purges of disproportionately African-American voters, people who voted for Obama in 2008, hadn't voted in prior elections since then. And what was, so now we come to the issue of was this election stolen because uh, would these numbers have matched up? Well, what was the deficit? 58,150. Now, 107,000 people who were purged back in uh, July of 2017, uh, they did not, uh, they weren't, those were people who, uh, who, were not purged for legitimate reasons. They were purged for ri ridiculous reasons, fake reasons, reasons that are made in order to uh, make conservatives win a not fair election. And that's that's just the truth. That's that's honestly the out and out truth. And that's just the truth of the situation. And again, we know that 53,000, uh, not long before the actual election happened, 53,000, th there was easily between that 53K and 107K, Yes, there was enough to do that. And also, these weren't the only voter issues, buddy. Apparently, they left them open to hacking and stuff. This guy, again, this dude was the person overseeing the election. He's literally the Secretary of State, which certifies the election. He's the one, the top election official, overseeing official, is running for governor. There needs to be a rule in place immediately, federal, nationwide. Anyone who is running for governor cannot oversee their own election this is insane this is worse than like some this is like some dictator type shit like what is that how do you have how how sway how it's impossible this is like when erdogan had a referendum on his own power gain and it's like you just faked the results dude it's insane dude i cannot believe this and it's um there was also some some uh some leaked audio by the way where Here's what it says. This is from the Rolling Stone as well. It says, Kemp then asserted that much of Abrams' effort is focused on absentee ballot requests. Quote, They have just an unprecedented number of that, which is something that continues to concern us, especially if everybody uses and exercises their right to vote. What a weird way to say it. Uh, which they absolutely can and mail those ballots in. We got to have heavy turnout to offset that. Hmm. Why'd you add which they absolutely can towards the end of that statement? Probably because you knew you got exposed pretty bad. You should expose yourself. Why would you throw in, especially if everybody uses and exercises their right to vote? Why? First of all, just these statements alone coming from the person overseeing the election in the first place, you know, red alert, red alert, you know, sirens, sirens, sirens. Like, there's no way you can allow this to happen. But the fact that, you know, you say that um, tells us we know what you're doing, man. So... To the Daily Wire third stringer and all the other smug morons who think that this election wasn't stolen, um, you're an idiot, and that's, that's just the way it is. Sorry.